Welcome back. Van building once again after a brief break for some struggle and sadness. This is probably going to be a reasonably short one because we're just talking about varnishing the walls and the ceiling. Walls, ceiling, walls, ceiling. You know what they look like. The first stage of the equation is just to clean up as much as possible, remove all the extra stuff that's lying all over the floor, which inevitably builds up when you're getting busy with the van build. Um, yep, sweeping, clearing, hoovering. Uh, then everything needs a varnish. A varnish? <laughs> then everything needs a sand. At this point, I was just doing that manually with sandpaper and a block. And later I used an electric sander, which is definitely a worthwhile thing to have when doing something like this, because there is a hell of a lot of varnishing that you need to do. We then covered the floors with dust sheets just to kind of protect from blobs and drips and things falling down and yeah it got stuck in we started with the walls i think we started on the bulkhead the footage i've got is a little bit patchy again because of lost time lapses boo but hey it's only just us kind of like brushing the walls my mum helped a lot with this stage and she was very important in actually convincing me to do the varnishing. I didn't really want to do it very much. It just felt like a bit of a ball ache. But it is definitely worth doing while everything's clear, just so you get a bit of varnish on everything to protect it while there's nothing in the way. The varnishing is something that seems to not be acknowledged very much in a lot of the series of fan builds that I've watched. But it's quite a big job and quite annoying because it has lots of little discrete stages and then in between there is just waiting for stuff to dry and for big stuff like this it's not like you can really carry on with anything else while you're waiting for it to dry because you would potentially get dust or bits of stuff in the way or get other stuff in the way that would stop you from carrying on so yeah you kind of just have to take a bit of time out to let this stage happen as with all the other painting and varnishing i was using Lakeland paints. They're basically all natural, VOC free, no smells and completely vegan as well. So the biggest plus point was really the the lack of VOCs, not just low VOC but none whatsoever. Uh, so for a small space where I'm going to be working and can't really leave it for a while to evaporate and get rid of all those nasty carcinogens, that was a real advantage. And just knowing that it's not gonna be leaking anything while I'm living in it, that was that was pretty worth the extra expense, but they are definitely more expensive than going for something more normal like Danish oil. But it's definitely worth being aware of, of the negative health effects of VOCs and the fact that actually quite a lot is allowed to be included. So yeah, just, just be careful if you are gonna use something with a high VOC content or you know, a medium, you, you'll wanna leave it for a while to air before you spend time, especially in, a, in an enclosed space like the van. Yeah, as I said before, we started with the walls. I also tried to do some of the electrical socket boxes that I covered a video or two ago, uh, which I definitely should have done at the point that I made them before I put all of the actual sockets in there because it made it a lot harder to actually do them properly. I did later take them off and do a better coat underneath, but yeah, it was kind of awkward. I, I sort of learned a lesson from that, which is that you just basically need to varnish everything at the point that you make it pretty much, or at least before you install it properly because you're just gonna create more work for yourself if you don't. We tried our best to follow the instructions that were given with the varnish uh, but it's a little bit confusing because it sort of says things that are kind of contradictory like use a well-loaded brush but don't allow it to pull and then don't overbrush. so you kind of have to balance these things out and kind of try and avoid overbrushing at the same time as trying to avoid pooling and the we used the matte wood varnish for the walls and ceiling rather than the gloss that was on the floor because i didn't really want super shiny walls i'm not generally that big a fan of really shiny wood it feels kind of unnatural and strange to me and that was a bit thinner than the stuff for the floor so it was a little bit easier to accidentally drip it over the place and have spots and rogue pieces of varnish everywhere but it wasn't too bad uh, at least for the walls it was pretty straightforward to catch any drips on dust sheets and yeah it didn't take that long the the bigger part is just kind of the in-between stages and waiting as once you've done a, a coat you then have to 
give it another sand because it will have done something called grain raising which is basically just that it gets rough again i don't exactly know how the grain manages to escape and form a colony on top but it does uh, but it's very easily sanded off with just like a high grit i think i was using like 240 just a very quick run over with that will get it smooth and nice again and then you can just wipe that off with a damp cloth which is probably something i should have mentioned that we did earlier before the sanding a, a bit of pattern of sand and then wipe with a damp cloth seemed to work really well for getting rid of any extra woody nasties that needed to go yeah once you've sanded off the grazed grain you can just do another coat which usually doesn't require quite as much because the wood's absorbed a reasonable amount at that point so it's kind of like a thinner layer so noisy again hate recording in the day but it is the time that i have now so there we go then we moved on to the ceiling which is a little bit harder because it's above you so drips will drip onto you potentially or onto a wider part of the floor but it's reasonably easy to to deal with that with a lot of dust sheets and being careful i guess the other issue is just like neck and arm ache from just being like this for ages but it didn't take too long with two of us on the job we got it done pretty quickly and same process of waiting for it to dry sanding wiping doing another coat i can't remember if we did two or three coats on the on the walls and ceiling i have a feeling we just did two which maybe wasn't as many as we could have done i'm pretty sure the the instructions just say a minimum of two and then a minimum of three for floors so it's kind of fine i mean i've not seen any issues with it yet it seems to be holding up okay well it's holding up quite nicely really because it doesn't really get in contact with any dirt or grime on like the floor which is trashed yeah it's a funny task because it's sort of not that hard but at the same time all you can do is do it wrong there isn't really some magic perfection that you can strive towards other than not doing things badly like leaving spots or streaks or missing bits so yeah it's okay the the bigger surfaces like the walls and ceilings were pretty easy it's kind of easy to reach everything and keep track of what you've done sanding smaller uh sanding varnishing smaller stuff is definitely more difficult and i was very very sick of varnishing by the end of this project as i think i've said before well i'm sure i'll say it again because there was a lot of it and i don't think anyone really prepares you for the sheer amount of varnishing that is required when you when you're using this much wood but yeah that that's it basically quite a brief one for this week if you have enjoyed then a like is great otherwise i'll catch you in the next one which is where we get into some of the more interesting woodworking actually which is the upper cupboards so that's um yeah that was quite a lot to get my head around but uh, they turned out all right they don't, definitely don't look like super professional shiny ones like you see on self-built campers by seemingly always someone who claims that they had no experience that i just don't believe um i think they probably just mean no experience building a van not no experience ever having used a power tool but uh, there we go, I like them anyway, because I like the weirdness. I like that it's all wonky, like my soul. Uh, anyway, I'll catch you next time. See you later, taters.